Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the Master's House. I'm Pastor Jim, and this is Katie, Pastor Jim and Katie Langwa, and we are ministering virtually from the Langwa Ranch right here in Ashland, Virginia, about 15 miles north of the city of Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> and we are the Master's House. He's the pastor. No, he's the master. I'm the pastor. I <laughs> you said it backwards. Right. He's the master, and I'm the pastor. So that's awesome. And uh, <laughs> this is my lovely wife. And we love coming to you every Sunday morning to minister the Word of God. We're going to have a especially good message today, a little bit different, and uh, but I think it's really going to minister to you, and you will not regret being with us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I'm really excited about it. Today. Yes. It's yeah. such such a good thing. It's some new information for us. <laughs> And Excuse it's me. very possible that you've never heard this information before, mm -hmm. and it'll be a blessing to you, I believe. Yeah. So, in Jesus' name, it will. Yes. Um, also, at the end of the service, we're going to be taking communion, and we'd love for you to join us. So get yourself uh, some juice or some water, uh, and then some crackers or some bread. We have uh, we use some crackers and some bread for communion, and we're going to. Uh, uh, we hope you'll join us with a communion meal at the end of the service. Amen. Amen. We also have a spe special message to make, <laughs> yes. but we're not going to make the special message till the end of the service, so you'll have to say, stay till then to hear the spe special message. So stay tuned for a special message we're going to give them. We are? An announcement. Really? Yes. Do I know about this announcement? Yes, you do know about this. Yes, you, you even have a slide to show everybody about it in a little bit. Oh, 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 oh. Yes. thank you, thank She's you. Okay, now I'm going to And so back that's our moment. cat Callie talking to us. She loves to talk. Seems like every time we start a broadcast, she wants to have yes. a conversation with us. And with so, you. Uh, with me. <laughs> and so if you hear in the background, just uh, just ignore it. It's our lovely Not cat. you. Them. Oh, them. Maybe she wants to have a conversation with them. Yes. That's good. Well, cats rule, and, they, and she rules here. So She does. Cat, we're her so. humans. Yeah, we're <laughs> at the Langwa Ranch. Yes. That's right. So are you all ready to pray? I'm ready to pray, and then we're going to get started right into the message. Father, we come before you in Jesus' name. We thank you for your anointing. Uh, thank you for the ability to minister today for Katie and I together as one. And uh, we pray that this message is a blessing to everyone who's listening, that it will add to their lives and be a plus to them today and in the future. And for any, anyone listening to this message uh, being uh, post-recorded after, after we record this and post it, uh, we're praying for you too, uh, that this will be an addition to your life. It'll really make a difference, and it'll be a blessing to you and your walk with Christ. In Jesus' name, Jesus and everybody name. says, Amen. Amen. Well, the title of the message is The Power of Four. The Power of Four. And uh, I hadn't heard of this till recently. It's kind of a long story, but um, I use the Bible software, Logos, L-O-G-O-S. Some people say Logos, some people say Logos. And um, I've been using that software probably for 30 years at least in, in ministering and assisting me in putting together messages and Bible study and things like that. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best Bible software uh, on earth, actually. Yeah. And uh, so we were listening to a broadcast by John Bevere and uh, 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 a main person who worked at Lagos. I was going to uh, say, it wasn't by John Bevere. No, he was a special guest. He was a special guest. And they were talking about um, uh, how much they liked the software and what it's been uh, uh, done over the years and grown into. And, um, and then the man that was ministering uh, to us through that talked about this truth called the power of four, which, which was amazing to me. Yeah. And so I just thought we would take the time today to uh, tell you about some uh, a really great scientific studies that's been done uh, concerning the Word of God <laughs> and uh, how we grow in Christ. Amen? Yeah. Research. Research. Research that has been done. Yeah. What did I say? Scientific studies. Scientific research. Yes. And so, um, it's more of statistical research. Yeah. And uh, you're going to enjoy it. It's going to make a difference. Called The Power of Four. Let's start with the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, and verse 12 in the New Living Translation. I'll read it. For the word of God is alive and powerful, it is sharper than the sharpest two edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Now, what I, I like about this verse is it, it shows that the, in, within the word itself is power. 
And that word will change and affect our soul and our spirit, our joint and marrow and our thoughts and desires. And the way I was seeing this last night as I was looking at it, it will impact uh, your soul, and your soul, your spirit. And then, of course, your joint and marrow, that's your physical body. It'll even have an effect on your physical body and your thoughts and desires. So your, your soul, your mind, your spirit, and your body will be changed by the Word of God itself. Now, the Word of God is the Bible. It's written words in, from the original of Hebrew and Greek, um, and, but it's God's Word. And within those words written in that book, it has the ability to bring life right. to our spirit, our soul, and our physical body. But the problem is we've got to get that word in a specific place for that to happen. And where it has to be planted is in our heart. Right. It can't just exist in the book between the covers. It has to come from the book into our heart for these changes to, to, to come to pass. So I'll read it again. For the word of God is alive and powerful. The written word of God and even the spoken word. And when we take that word and put it in our heart, it's alive and powerful, sharper than the, the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. And it exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. It reveals everything that we need. Amen. Right. And somebody might ask you, Pastor Jim, mm -hmm. um, how do I get the word of God in my heart? And, um, you know, because a lot of times we often do this in school and things like that is we skim and five minutes later we've forgotten everything that we just read. Right. So how do we get something imparted into our heart? I think that this message today is going to give us the, the how. Yes. And, and that's, the, that's the answer I was going to give you. We're going to work on this through the message. And yeah. you will see there's more than one way. Yeah. But the issue is we've got to get it into our heart for the transformation to take place. Right, right. And so a great question is how do we do that? And I think that we'll answer that as we go on, don't you? Yes. And so let's look at the book of James, chapter 1, verse 21 in the New Living Translation. You read this one, Katie. All right, so... Get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives and humbly accept the word God has planted in your hearts, for it has the power to save your souls. This is a great translation because it tells us where it has to be planted. Yeah. It tells us that if, if it's planted in the heart, it will help get rid of all the filth and evil in our lives and, and, and humbly accept the word of God as planted in or that, that he has planted in your hearts. That's where we got to get it. Right. And we got to know how to do it because if we don't, we won't have that transformation for it has the power to save our souls. Wow. Yeah. And there is some accountability in that verse too because it means that you have to make a choice. Mm. It means that you have to do something. So are you, would you say that it's, the process of the word being planted in our heart is not an automatic process. No, it's no. not. It's not going to be absorbed by osmosis. <laughs> yes, it's not right. one of those types of things. But it does mean when it says, so get rid of all the filth and evil in your lives, that means that maybe there's some things in your lives that you have let in. Right. Not necessarily out of your control, but these are the things that are in your control. Right. That he says, if you can remove those things, then these are things that are in your control to do. Aha. Uh -huh. And I'm sure that everybody listening, just like us, would love for that transformation to take place uh, as much as possible. Yes. And as, as often as possible. Yes. And I think a lot of the times, and I like the word because it says, and humbly accept the word. Because that also means that the word is going to... Um, shine light on those things that need to be removed. Wow. You may not see it right now. The veil may be, um, you know, over those things. You may be um, blind to those things, but the word will shine light on those things that need to be removed. Mm. Now, what we heard about in that uh, conversation with the uh, Zoom on um, on the Bible software, Lagos, mm -hmm. was about an organization uh, called the Center for Bible Engagement. And um, you can find this uh, organization at the centerforbibleengagement.org. You can look that up. Um, and uh, we're going to read a few things uh, that they have said in this organization. 
And then we're going to look at a research that they have uh, done back in 2009, which is really what we want to concentrate on. And so, but I like this title. It's not the Center for Bible Education. It's not the Center for Bible Truth. It's not the Center. It's called the Center for Bible Engagement. And what it is studying is not necessarily what the Bible says, but it's studying how do we get engaged Mm -hmm. with Mm -hmm. the Bible Mm -hmm. and how many people are doing it, how well is it going, what's effective, what's not effective. Right. Uh, So they're studying uh, facts and figures about Bible engagement. And not just facts and figures, but social like mm-hmm. um, you know, social behaviors You're and right. morality and Beha- things like that. Moral yeah. behaviors, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm going to read this note uh, from them before we get into their uh, scientific research on the power of four. But this was a quote right off their be- the the uh, website. Unfortunately, t- now this is talking about Bible engagement. Mm-hmm. Today, many Christians fail to tap into that power regularly. Well, what power? The word that's able to transform our souls and our bodies. As a result, our spiritual growth stagnates. We rely on uh, on our own strength, or we rely on only our own strength to deal with daily trials and temptations, making it more likely that we will fail. Mm. Wow, those falls hurt us and hurt our witness. Why? Because of a lack of an engagement Mm. with the object that has the power to transform us, mm. you know, or the entity, however you want to say that. Uh, another quote they said was about six in ten Americans say they read the Bible at least on occasion. Mm. <laughs> that came out as a Gallup poll back in 2000. Uh, they say that less than two out of five read the Bible at least once a week. Two out of five. At least once. At least once a week. Less than that Hmm. is what we're finding. Uh, Only one out of four American Christians completely agree with the statement that they regularly study the Bible to find direction in their lives. Wow. So that's a quarter. That's 25% of American Christians who are looking to the word for guidance and direction in their lives. Well, that's scary. Yes. That's really scary, especially if you're a Christian. You you know, you're a Christian. (laughs) We should be looking at our source, you know. Yeah. And that was a Gallup poll back in 2003. Uh, Another quote, a lack of scriptural engagement produces several consequences. Mm. Disengagement from God's word has left American believers ignorant of basic Bible facts and truths, vulnerable to false teachings, and in many cases, spiritually immature. Because there's no engagement, they're vulnerable to false teachings. Yeah. Mm. Well, and I I was really interested in what they meant by, like, basic Bible facts. Right, And, and, and you talked about that last night, so why don't you mention some of those? So, when they talk about the, you know... Um, so many, you know, lack of scriptural engagement leaves believers ignorant of basic Bible facts. Here's some of the examples that they uh, discovered in this particular research. Half, one half of young adults and more than one third of older adults could not identify the town where Jesus was born. Uh, that should be pretty basic. That was a, that was a pause moment right there. Oh. To not be able to identify Bethlehem. Mm. That's really interesting. So greater than one third of adults could not identify the town where Jesus was. So we went and asked them, where was Jesus born? And they were Christians. And we'll find out that they're not just new Christians. Yeah. Uh, they, they will go, um, I, hmm. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> and then the other one that I found was interesting. Three out of ten teens don't know... Who preached the Sermon on the Mount? So if you ask them who preached the Sermon on the Mount, they'd say, uh, hmm. I don't know. That's pretty basic. Pretty basic. Not real encouraging. You know, maybe we need to do a better job of our education system. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, in December of 2009, the Center for Biblical Engagement published a major scientific research study. Mm -hmm. And they titled it 
Understanding the Bible Engagement Challenge, Scientific Evidence for the Power of Four. So they're saying there's this scientific evidence about the power of four that could positively affect Bible engagement mm -hmm. and uh, understanding the challenge and the benefits, Yeah, uh, which is fascinating. Now, uh, the Center for Biblical Engagement uh, was formed in 2003. And so this report came out in 2009. So I'm saying uh, it took them about six years to compile this information and before it was published in 2009. I find it interesting that this was published in 2009 and here we are in 2021 and I've never heard of them or the report. Yeah. But it was so interesting when we heard about it a couple of weeks ago. I said, you know, I really want to share this information because yeah. I think everybody should know what they what they've discovered. So they had a six-year study publication and it's about 21 pages in length mm -hmm. and you can get it right off their website and I pretty much read most of it both both of us kind of scanned through it as best we could but in this report it tells of their research methods and their findings mm -hmm. uh, they have charts they have their conclusions they have references and there's a website you can go to and I gave you a slide that you could put this up there for them if you can find it yeah and uh, they have the website it's www the letter C, the number four, the letter B, the letter E dot org, which stands for uh, uh, the Christians. Uh, what, what, what do we call this? Uh, the uh, so, um, Bible uh, Engagement Center. Center, for that's right. The Center, that's and the, it. it stands for the C, there for uh, Bible Engagement. That's the C4BE. Okay. And then number four for the four there, dot org. C4BE dot org. It's at the bottom of your screen. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so. Uh, this survey was a study of o over 400,000 people. That's a big survey. Mm -hmm. It was between the ages of 8 and 80. It included 24 countries, mm -hmm. over 75 denominations, mm -hmm. and it included churches, schools, and the general population. Mm -hmm. And they came up with this article on the power of four effect. Mm -hmm. And you can go to that website and, and just print out Check that it out. Yeah. PDF. It's a PDF document that's great, a great read. So, and dive I'll, in. All right, you ready? Why don't yeah. you read this? Go ahead. All right, so a key discovery from the CBE research is that the life of someone who engages Scripture four or more times a week looks radically different from the life of someone who does not. Radically different. So, the life of someone who engages scripture four or more times a week looks radically different from the life of someone who does not. Okay. Okay. In fact, the lives of Christians who do not engage the Bible most days of the week are statistically the same as the lives of non-believers. So if, if we're reading this correctly and show you this revelation between the people who may be engaged three days a week and the people who are engaged four days a week, there's the a one, drastic, drastic change difference. between the three and four yeah. in the results of what the, the word is being produced in where it was sent, right. which was their heart. And drastically different. It wasn't just a little bit of a change between three and four. As a matter of fact, the one through three was as if they just kind of matched those who never did anything. Right. So the lives of those that only did three days a week, um, in comparison, their lives were matched to those that read zero days a week. But once they hit four times a week, the numbers went whoosh, off yeah. the chart. Yeah. Very interesting. I'm not sure why. Uh, I don't know whether we know why or not, other than this is something we need to understand. Yes. The truth of it. So keep going. I just read that. Oh, we read the whole thing. Yes, I did. Uh, yes, you did. And so uh, there you go. This paragraph. All right. Read. How about that? All right. We have discovered through our research large behavioral differences between Christians who read or listen to the Bible at least four days a week and those who engage with scripture less often. Mm -hmm. These differences include both moral behavior as well as how prepared the individual is to serve God and impact the world. As a pastor, we're always wanting an effect on moral behavior. Sure. You know, we, on ourselves and, and us as Christians, yeah. uh, we want to get rid of the evil that's within us and walk in righteousness, which is, you know, like our scripture we open with. We're looking for more behavior change. And what this is saying is the difference between three and four can affect moral behavior 
and our service to God and our impact on the world. It's amazing. Huge difference. Yeah. That's, that's, that's just amazing to me. As a matter of fact, Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 11 says this in the New Living Translation. It is the same with my, with my word. I send it out and it always produces fruit. It will accomplish all I want it to, and it will prosper everywhere I send it. Now, a lot of times we pray, let the word go forth, and it won't, won't come back void. It will produce that which is desired, you know, it, it's made to do. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true if it gets in the heart. Right, in the heart. In that heart ground, that'll yeah. happen. But here's the thing. The word wants, it always produces fruit. Fruit, right. it'll always accomplish what it's designed to do and prosper everywhere he sends it. He sends it to the hearts. But what we're finding is those that engage three days as opposed to those who engage four or more, the difference is drastic. Yes. Mm, wow. So here's another note. You can read this one, Katie. All right. From the research, it says, without a firm grasp of the Bible, nurtured through daily reading or listening. Or so listening. So it's not just reading, but it could be listening. Yeah. We weaken our ability to defend the faith we claim less confident to share that faith with others, and more vulnerable to falling prey to false teachings. Wow. So here's some of the facts that they gave us. Someone who engages the Bible four or more times a week mm -hmm. are, and these numbers are fascinating. Why don't you read the first one? All right, so 228% more likely to share faith with others. Now that means from the person who's three days a week, to the person who's four days a week, that's, suddenly that's there's a 228% big... increase yeah. in their wanting to share their faith with others. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. Another fact. Go read the second one. 407% <clears throat> more likely to memorize scripture. How much percent? 407%. 407% more likely to measure, memorize scripture is the person with four or more days than the people with up to three days. Mm -hmm. Mm. Uh, fifty nine percent less likely to view pornography. You could just even that out at sixty percent. Uh, fifty nine percent, sixty percent less likely to view pornography. All of a sudden, from the third to the fourth uh, day per week, and then the last one I'll read. Okay. I find interesting. Uh, that jump from number three to number four is thirty percent less likely to struggle with loneliness. Mm. Mm. Wow. Wow. There are some sad statistics from those who do not engage. Mm -hmm. And this is a fact that they put out there. Most people who claim to follow Christ do not read or listen to the Bible on most days of the week. Not good. That's a sad statistic. Here's yeah. another one that came out in 2006. Um, an estimated 8 out of 10 youth from evangelical Christian homes walk away from their faith by age 23. Something's happening uh, from, you know, when the, the kids are getting into college age and, and through there uh, up to age 23, there must be less engagement mm -hmm. in Scripture yeah. for that to happen. Right. Very sad statistic. Or, based on what we're research is finding, is maybe there wasn't enough planted to begin with. To begin with, yeah. 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 And then, uh, so in sum, writes this, uh, the... Uh, Center for Biblical Engagement. In sum, these analyses confirm what they, uh, their initial research with Christ followers and what it revealed, that there's a powerful relationship between engaging Scripture at least four times a week and moral behavior. That's when moral behavior begins to be affected. Hmm. Isn't that fascinating? And among both adults and teens, reading or listening to the Bible at least four times a week, it lowers the odds of engaging in harmful moral behaviors, and they named them, yeah. such as getting drunk, having sex outside of marriage, using pornography, and gambling. Mm -hmm. That's the studies that they came up with. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Well, just some of the behaviors that they honed in on, really. Yeah. So... Um, you know, and you can see those charts on the website that yes. actually show the percentage. Um, and they're quite amazing, especially if you're a visual person. Yes. And, and you know, anybody looking at statistics, you want, really want to trust the science and trust how they were doing it. And so that article goes in all of it, all of their uh, 
their studies and how they did this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it's very, very uh, true and accurate. Um, and perhaps more important is the fact that we find no statistically significant differences between those who read or listen to the Bible only one to three days a week and those who do not at all. Not sure what's causing all that and why the big difference when you hit the fourth day or more. But it's good information for us to know. And remember, this is a survey done with over over 400,000 people from 23 000, countries. 24 countries, I think it was. was 23, 23 countries. 23 countries, 400,000 people. This is no small thing. No. Um, here's a quote from a person named Woodrow, Woodrow Kroll in August of 2009. Why don't you read that one? I remind you that God wrote a book. And he only wrote one. <laughs> I wonder what we'll say to him at the judgment seat of Christ if he asks us, did you read my book? I mean, one time in your life, did you read my whole book? Hmm. And you know, what's really interesting is that I do know people that have read the Bible all the way through, but they don't have the word planted in their heart. So it tells you that just, just if you read the book one time, that's not it. It's not considered... Biblical engagement. No. No. Even if you've read it three times and you've planted nothing in your heart, hmm. it's not it. We're talking about a daily yeah. walk with God. Right. Right. And so um, I think we're going to explore some of this some more. But what I, I remember, um, I was talking to you last night about um, John and Lisa Bevere have had people come up to them and say, you know, um, we would love to be mentored by you. Yeah. And they said, okay, have you read my book? Have you read my books? And they say, sometimes they say yes, and sometimes they say, well, no. Okay, well, read my books. Because their books are their life. That's their testimony. That's the journey that they've been on. And those are the discipleship tools. Yes. Right? So, you know, we're looking at the creator of the universe. And we've talked about this, that Jesus is the word. Yes. Jesus is the Word. He is, yes. So when we're reading this book, this is not just a piece of literature. This is the living Word of God. This is Jesus. This is a relationship. So we're going to talk a little bit more about that. But um, there's so much more to um, Christianity than just reading and doing, doing like, you don't, you don't want to slim it down to something like homework or, or just a schedule or mm, strategy. That's a good point. This is a relationship. So keep word. that in mind. When you're reading the word and what it means to plant it in your heart is there's an actual heart connection here. There's a relationship going on. And and the issue we need to understand is many people say, well, I talk to him all the time, but I want to hear from him. Uh, but he'll turn and say, well, read my book. Have you read my book? <laughs> Have you read my book? I've, I've written this book for you, so it's very clear and concise, and it's how I disciple you, and it's how... I can get into your heart and make a difference. Right. And so have you read my book? That Jesus could say that same thing. And, yeah. and as, a, as a pastor and a writer myself, I've written several books. And so some people can come to me with a question. I'll say, well, I've written a book on that. Um, you know, if you get the book, I would suggest you read that. It'll give you all that I know yeah. about that particular subject. Somebody might say, well, why don't you just speak to me, Jesus? Why do you have to write it down in a book? Why don't you just speak to me? Why? Because we forget. We forget. And a lot of times if we hear from the Lord, we need to write it down. Why? Because yeah. we forget. So Jesus did something where he made this last. He made his word, his life, his testimony last. He put it down so that yeah. we could go back and reread it and reread yeah. it and reread it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's fascinating. I love it. And so um, what keeps people from reading the Bible? Oh, <laughs> so... You were the one who typed this up. Yeah. So, well, well, what keeps any of us from reading the Bible? Well, let me put it out to, to you this way. In the research that was done, these are um, the things that, that people responded with yes. that said that this is what keeps them from reading the Bible. Right. Some people said it was they're too busy. Mm -hmm. There's a lack of time. That's, mm -hmm. There's too many distractions or interruptions. All the time. Right, and distractions could be work, interruptions could be children, could be whatever. Yeah. Heart issues. And Explain I, that. I wanted to write like what, what these heart issues, what that meant. Um, people sometimes will run to God 
But there are other people that run away when, when facing, facing trials, trial, yeah. confusion, guilt, anger, etc. Um, so that's what I mean by heart issues. Um, sometimes we get too comfortable. We convince ourselves um, of this false belief that when things go well, we don't need God's word. Mm, we only we we'll only address Him when we're in trouble. When we're in trouble, well, we we have a, we need an answer to something. It's the only time we ever talk to Him, right? Uh, or allow Him to talk to us by reading the Bible. You know, we just get too comfortable. Yeah. Um, now, what's really interesting is a minority of believers, and I say this again, a minority of believers mm -hmm. stated these resource issues as some of their reasons for not being able to get into the Word. They said that there's a lack of accountability. Mm. They said that they're unsure of where to start. Oh. And then some said there's difficulty understanding or interpreting biblical passages. Sure. Okay, so those are like your resource issues. But in the research, it said that it's important to note that this minority, this minority of believers have followed Christ for more than 10 years, with many of them following over 20 years. Uh-oh. And are not new believers. They're these losing are, their excuse here. Right. These are not new Christians. These are not baby Christians. These are Christians, believers for... 10, sometimes over 20 years. Mm. So in essence, the real issue here is that they have a lack of motivation. And priorities. Right. It's yeah. not the fact that they don't have the resources. It's the fact that they're not motivated to go look for them. It says when Google searching Bible reading plan, the search engine brings up more than 120,000 possible links. That should give us some good information on where to start. Well, and that was 2009. <laughs> yeah. Think about where it is now. Yeah. And now we have, like, a different ministries have come out with even easier apps. Messenger Inter International has Messenger X. And they have curriculum. They have yeah. plans. We have uh, Life Church came out with the Bible app. Yes. It has its own reading plans from different ministers all kinds from of all plans over on the that. world. That's a great, and every day it tells you, here's your, here's what you need to do right on your phone. It even reminds you. Yes, yes. Like, hey, have you done your scripture reading today? Right. So what's really interesting about this, in this study, many who gave these reasons acknowledge that all reasons were just excuses. Uh huh. And what was the real problem? That they have not made God's word a priority in their lives. Uh, and that speaks to all of us. Yeah. To me, to you, everybody. Yeah. We've got to figure out how to prioritize things in our life. Yeah. And yeah. so, if we want the results we're talking about. Yeah. But what's funny is it's saying the difference between three and four, the power of four, is something good to know because that's not this overwhelming fact. Oh my gosh. You mean if I just read the Bible or make some effort four times a week that it could really make a difference. Yeah. That there's something different between three and four. We don't, may not understand understand why. Or it's just something to know. I can shoot for that. Right. You know? Right. <clears throat> you know? Right. Wonderful. <clears throat> and so, <clears throat> I will say this. I wanted to <clears throat> say this a minute ago, but, but in a conversation, there's talk going from both sides. You know, you talk to somebody We're and they talk, talk back. talk about that a little bit more later, but yeah. Oh, you want me to wait? Yeah. All right, I'm going to wait. I'm going to yeah. wait. So, let's talk about... <laughs> I'll do that because okay. she wants to share that. Cool. <clears throat> the parable of the sower is a really good uh, uh, object or, or story that Jesus told, understanding the excuses mm -hmm. and, and what it does. And it says in Luke 8, 11 in the New Living Translation... Um, this is the meaning of the parable. It says the seed is God's word. Well, we know where the seed has to be planted. Mm -hmm. It has to be planted in our heart. Mm -hmm. Let's skip down to verse 13. We'll read through 14. The seeds on the rocky soil, that would be a rocky heart, mm -hmm. represents those who hear the message and receive it with joy. Oh, great. But since they didn't have any deep roots, they believe for a little while, then they fall away when they face temptation. Mm. So that's somebody when temptation comes because they haven't engaged in the word enough. Mm -hmm. They have a shallow depth of mm -hmm. God's word. They're not able to face the temptations that they hit. Yeah. And, it, and it can pull them away from the word of God. Verse 14 says, The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who, those who hear the message, but all too quickly. The message is crowded out by the cares and riches and pleasures of this life. As they, as, 
act. Let me and say this so. right. And so they never grow into maturity. So that's what we were talking about. The interruptions, the distractions, the cares of this life. Yeah. We all have it. Yeah. Everyone has it. And uh, we all work and we all have uh, children or busy things that we have to do. And so, again, we need to know there's some power of four that can help us with this. Amen? Amen. 2 Timothy 3.16, you want to read that one? Sure. Um, New Living Translation. 2 Timothy 3.16-17. through 17. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful to teach us what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. There's that light. Yeah. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to prepare and equip his people to do every good work. And, and what that kind of hits against is I've heard people say concerning certain issues, well, Jesus never said that. Mm. Uh, he didn't say that while he was here uh, on earth. And I said, well, wait a minute. Is Jesus the word? Mm-hmm. Is he all scripture? Mm-hmm. This stuff. It says all scripture is beneficial to us. Whether Jesus quoted it uh, in, in, in his years on earth mm-hmm. or whether it came through God using other people to write it or say it. Yeah. It's all scripture is Jesus. Yes. Everything is Jesus. So you can't say Jesus didn't say that. No. He said from Genesis through Revelation, that's him. And we can't count anything out. So if we want to know what Jesus has to say, we must consider Genesis through Revelation. Right. And I mean, even in John where it says, in the beginning was the word. Yes. If you truly believe that in the beginning was the word, then you know that Jesus is the entire word. Yep. That's right. So go ahead and read this, uh, some more notes from that website. Mm -hmm. Um, So statistical analysis or analyses reveal that controlling for other factors such as age, gender, church attendance, and prayer Christians who are engaged in scripture most days of the week have lower odds of participating in the listed behaviors we're about to say. So there are 57% lower odds of believers getting drunk, 68% lower odds of sex outside of marriage. 68%? Mm-hmm. Wow. Lower. Go yeah. ahead. 61% lower odds of pornography. We mentioned that earlier. Yeah. 74% lower odds of gambling. Amazing. But then, on the other hand, there's 228% higher odds of sharing faith with others. That's a great result. Yeah. 231% higher odds of discipling others. 231% yeah. higher. And then 407% higher odds of memorizing scripture. That's fascinating. Yeah. Go ahead. Keep reading. So Christianity is relational. This is what you wanted this to talk This is about. the part I wanted to talk about. It was designed for two-way communication in mind that's how he wanted it yeah. when he brought the israelites you know into the wilderness he wanted them to come to him he wanted to have a relationship that's what this was all about this is his plan from the very beginning and far too often we have engaged in one-way communication Ah, uh, big difference right by praying to him But God desires to have a conversation with us. Uh We are instructed, discipled, and stretched through his word. And Jesus is the word. So the number one way he communicates with us is the word of God. Is the word of God. His word, the Bible. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And that doesn't mean, we talked about this, that doesn't mean that the Lord can't speak to you. And that still quiet voice, you know. Um, Or... Just knowing that it, within your spirit, knowing within yes. your spirit something's something's right or something's not right. He does speak to you, but the majority of his of his word of of his instruction of his love for us of his is correction. in his word. Yeah. 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 Well, his. I mean, All you know, how else would we know that we were first chosen if we don't read his word? Yes. So um, the amount of love that he pours out to us in this word that's there to remind us over and over again. Um, we live in a society where a lot of times we post something online or post something via social media and it's one way. We don't even look for the comments most of the times. We just post it because we think it's funny or we post mm-hmm. it because we have to get it out there, whatever reason. Um, but it's always one way communication. And God says, no, that's not good enough for me. You right. can pray, 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 pray. And that's great. I want you to pray to me. But a lot of times I'm speaking to you and you're not even listening to me. Yeah. So that's one of those things where that two-way conversation needs to take place because this 
yeah. is a relationship. And if we want to hear him clearly in the spoken word when he speaks to our heart, if we don't know what the Bible has to say, we could be deceived. Yeah. Because whatever he speaks to our heart should always match up yes. with what he says in his word. Yes. Because the number one way he speaks to us is through his word. Yeah. Mm. It's amazing. You want to re- did we read this paragraph? I don't think so. Um, yes, we did. Um, no, maybe not. Uh, this is some more notes from the website. Um, okay, so today, so yeah, this was, this was from the research. Okay. Yes. Today, too many of us are focusing on one way communication and thus losing the day spiritually to the temptations and concerns of this world. They're losing their day. Yeah. The good news is that four scriptural touches, I like that, four scriptural touches a week can make a huge difference in turning this tide. That means us in connection with his word. Right. And yes. it doesn't mean necessarily, when it says touches, it could be a verse. It could, it could be could one be verse. Yeah. One verse that just really resonates and you meditate on that all day long because yeah. that's what you woke up and you saw that in your Bible reading plan or you saw that on your phone and you're like, wow, that's just something that's really, ah, oh, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And yes. that's something that has resonated with you and you're planting it in your heart so it doesn't have to be a book it doesn't have to be a chapter could it be sure right sure sure but it doesn't have to be it's just getting in there and planting it can it be in heard heart. and it can be read yeah <clears throat> but four times a week four or more is a significant change right and so the good news is that four scriptural touches a week can make a huge difference in turning this tide amazing i love that and that's really what we wanted to share today yeah uh you can go to the website there that uh for the center for biblical engagement and learn more but you don't really have to know much other than there's a big difference between three and four major difference I, it really meant a lot to me and that's why we want to share it today because yeah. we think it's very important information <laughs> the difference is huge and it's something we need to know Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, why don't you read this? This is what we started with. For the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword, cutting between soul and spirit, between joint and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Mm, That's just awesome. And so that is the power of four. And so we hope that that blesses you. Go look at the website, get the information if you want more, but just know this, think about it and start planning that you're going to get no less than four scriptural touches a week Uh in in your life and uh, even look for more. And uh, it's not a works trip. No. It's a relationship thing. Yeah. And uh, that's great information. Father, we thank you for this information. Thank you for this organization that did this research that came out in 2009 but i'm praying that this message would bless a lot that it would get this out there that uh, hey you know we need to think about our engagement Mm -hmm. with his word and we need to be engaged with him through his word on a regular basis and if we're engaged more than four times a week it's going to make a big difference in our lives in jesus Jesus name name. we pray for everybody who's listening that this makes a difference to you and a change and a transformation for you and, and bring success to your life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. How about that? Yeah. So somebody might be looking, I need help with a moral behavior that I've had difficulty with. Well, know the power of four. Yeah. You know? And even David, he says, um, he wanted to get God's word in his heart that he might not sin against God. Yeah. So it's a change of behavior. Uh, and, the, and the thing that gives the ability or the power is actually in Scripture yeah. itself. And there was another column, too, that we didn't really talk about, but it was any other kind of um, immoral behavior, Mm -hmm. you know, that kind of thing. And that could be addictions, drugs, anything like that. All kinds of Um, things. But the fact that it mentioned gambling, gambling is an addiction. Mm -hmm. And so if you're struggling with an addiction of some sort, the power of four gives you the ability to plant that scripture in your heart so that you can't any longer make the excuse of, I can't do this. Yes. Because you can do all things through Christ Jesus. And nothing's instant, uh, unless it happens to you that way. I mean, it's not that it can't, but the process of the power four can really make a difference for all of us. Thank you, Father, (laughs) for that in Jesus' name. Yeah.
And everybody said? Amen. Amen. Well, it's time for us to take communion. And uh, I was looking at a scripture that I thought we would read and to discuss about uh, the sacrificial lamb. Okay. How about this? This is Genesis chapter 22, verses 7 through 8 in the New King James Version. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood. But where is the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, my God, or excuse me, Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Now that's a very prophetic word. And I like it because what it's really saying is, is he's requiring Abra Abraham to do something, but not actually to make it the provision for it mm -hmm. and Abraham knew he says well I know that God's going to provide a way because Abraham can't do it mm -hmm. you know he'll just be obedient but God will provide a way in Isaiah chapter 53 verse 7 see they were looking for that sacrificial lamb that's where his son was looking and so Isaiah 53 7 says this in the New Living Translation he was oppressed and treated harshly yet he never said a word <clears throat> He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep is silent before the shear, shearers, he did not open his mouth. So here we see where God provided the sacrificial lamb. So guess what? You don't have to work to get rid of your sins. You don't have, have to make the sacrifice to be cleansed of sins. God has already provided the sacrificial lamb. So just like Abraham, we don't have to do something. We don't have to give our own children. We don't have to work for it. We need to receive it. Abraham knew that God will provide. And so he did. He provided Jesus. He sent his own son, not Abraham's son. He sent his own son to be the sacrificial lamb for us. And that is, he takes care of it for us, not ourselves. We believe by faith, but we don't have to be the provider. It's awesome. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. So... I like it. It says that um, he was oppressed and treated harshly. He never said a word. Whew. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing a video of how they slaughter a lamb in a sacrifice. It was a, a, a very, it was a real video, and, and it was just disturbing to me. I love animals. But to see the process of what they did to slaughter the lamb, and um, he was led that way. He was going to do that for us. He did that for us. Now, yeah, he was, well, he was in Isaiah 53. Yeah, and but he's he done did. It now. He yes. did that for us. And as a sheep is silent before his shearers, he did not even open his mouth. Jesus knew, I will do this to fulfill the will of God. Amen. Yeah. And so I'm so thankful that he did it for us and that we don't have to do it for ourselves. Mm -hmm. So, Father, we come before you right now. Uh, in the, in the covenant meal of, of uh, communion, which represented you as the sacrificial lamb. Your body was broken. They whipped you, they beat you. By your stripes, we are healed and delivered. Thank you, Father, that we don't have to provide the sacrificial lamb. It doesn't have to be our own son. It doesn't have to be ourselves because God sent his son to do, what, to do it for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We receive this bread right now. Go ahead, let's take this bread. Get your bread out. Which represented your broken body. That was broken that we might be healed. That's our provision for here on the earth. By your stripes we are healed and delivered. We eat this now saying thank you. It's as if we're eating the sacrificial lamb that had done its work for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Go ahead and eat. Mm. After supper, he took the cup. You can get your cup. He said, this is the blood of the New Testament. The New Testament was different than the Old in that uh, the blood didn't cover our sins. This washed and cleanses our sins. And without the washing of water, there is uh, no redemption. So, Father, we thank you for your blood has paid the price 
and has washed us clean. We're cleansed. And we are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Thank you, Thank you for taking all of our sin and washing it away in Jesus' name. Okay. Amen. Amen. Go ahead. I'm so glad we don't have to provide, figure out how to get the sacrificial lamb to do its work for us. Right. God did that. Yeah. He did it for us through his own son. And now we just want to receive an offering. We want to talk about giving. Um, giving into the kingdom of God is how it reaches, the word of God reaches all around the world mm -hmm. and supporting ministries, and ministers, and uh, writers and different things like that to, to preach the gospel all around the world. Churches to raise up people in their own communities, in your community. Genesis chapter 1, 28 through 31 says this in the New King James Version. Why don't you read this one, Katie? All right. Then God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, See, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth. And every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. Also to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food. And it was so. Then God saw everything, everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. The thing that means the most to me right now about this scripture is that he said to them, uh, I have given you. Mm -hmm. Everything mm -hmm. we just read, he has given to us. Mm -hmm. Everything that you can see. And anything that God has made, it's out of what God put on the earth. Yes. So there's nothing that God didn't do to provide for us. Right. And uh, I look out, I see the trees, the flowers, the, the cars, the house, and all of this has been given to us yes. by God. Yeah. And so the concept of turning around with a thank you in, in, the, in, the, in the honorable tithe, mm -hmm. which he says belongs to him, for us is just such a joy in thanksgiving. We, yeah. so, we look so forward to tithing and giving offerings because we look and we see everything that he's given us. Yeah. How could I say thank you? One way we can say thank you is by supporting his kingdom on the earth through tithes and offerings. And so tithes, he's decided how much, 10%. He's decided what for. Yeah. It goes to the storehouse, your church, and they're given specific instructions on what to do with it. And then offerings, we can give over and above what we want. We can direct what it's for and what it's, what it's going to do to affect different things. And it's getting involved in his kingdom. It's not the law. It's grace. It's, it's, it's an honorable part of our worship to him yes. for everything we have is yeah. from him. Yeah. This is the very least that I can do as a thank you and as a worship to him. And so uh, we would like for you to support this ministry and what we're doing here at the Master's House through uh, this broadcast. On Tuesday nights, we have a, a Zoom fellowship that we're doing. We'll tell you more about that. We also have uh, many uh, books we've written, and we're working on another book as we speak to get the Bible, uh, Bible and the, the Word of God around the earth. We have a special message for family that we'd like to share with you. We'll tell you more about that in a little bit. But we'd like for you to support us in what we're doing. And so there are several ways that you could do that. One would be by mail. You could send a check to TMH, which stands for the Master's House. And that would be at Post Office, uh, Post Office P.O. Box mm -hmm. 1568 in the town of Mechanicsville, Virginia. 23116, that's where our mailbox is. Or you can give by debit card or credit card through the website at tmhnow.org. And you can just go to the giving page and click on the uh, giving uh, button there. And it goes into a system called Tithely, T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y. And that's a way that you can give through credit giving. And that's a Christian-owned uh, business to transfer money to the kingdom. Yeah. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. And it goes to support other Christian families. And so also they have an app, a really nice app, the T-I-T-H-E dot L-Y app you can put on your phone. There are many, several churches that are using that. And if you use that, just look up for 
uh, the Master's House in Mechanicsville, Virginia, and that'd be another way that you can give to us mm -hmm. and we or give to the ministry here. So let's go ahead and pray over your giving and uh, believe God for his blessings upon it. And so pray this after me, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. I was lost. I was lost. But now by your grace. But now by your grace. I've been saved. I've been saved. I worship you. I worship you. And rejoice. And rejoice. In every good thing. In every good thing. You've given me. You have given me. I bring. I bring. And consecrate. And consecrate. My tithes and offerings. My tithes and offerings. To you. To you. The first fruits of the land. The first fruits of the land. You have given me. You have given me. You have established your kingdom. You've established your kingdom. On the earth. On the earth. And you've looked down from heaven and you've looked down from heaven and blessed us and blessed us your people your people and the land you've given and us and the land you've given in us in Jesus name in Jesus name amen amen and so thank you lord for blessing our giving and you ready to give the special announcement uh yes i can be all okay. right all right we have a special announcement and we have a guest speaker coming next week one of our favorites Dwayne Norman will be here Dwayne Norman will be here next saturday and sunday we're going to have three meetings, and he's going to teach on, I love this, are you skilled in the word of righteousness? Now, ask yourself, am I skilled in the word of righteousness? Well, uh, most of us would have to say, well, it's not going to hurt for us to learn more. Mm -hmm. Amen. Well, he has, uh, his ministry really is a new creation ministry. Yeah. And uh, being new creatures in Christ and, and, and the truth of that. And he's one of our favorite teachers. I've known mm -hmm. Dwayne for, uh, what, 30 years, probably more. And uh, <clears throat> so he's going to teach on, are you skilled in the word of righteousness for three meetings? That'll be next Saturday night, right here, live on Facebook at 7 o'clock. That'll be July the 31st. Mm, wow. And then on August the 1st, which is next Sunday. Do you believe that? Uh, oh, no. no. Summer's no. going quick. <laughs> next Sunday, he'll be here at 11 o'clock with us, right yeah. here. Yeah. And then also Sunday night. He'll be here at 7 o'clock. So we'll have three meetings, Saturday night 7, Sunday morning at uh, 11, 11, and Sunday night at, at 7. 7. And that'll be on Eastern Standard Time, U.S. time. We'd love to have you join us live here on Facebook for all three meetings. Don't miss Yay. it. It's going to be really great with Dwayne Norman. He's coming back. I love him. So in closing, we have two websites. <clears throat> you can find out more about us. One is tmhnow.org. The other one is FamilyBibleRevolution.com. There's some videos on there I'd love for you to watch right on the front page and learn about the message that we have for family. We also have our YouTube site, which is at the Master's House RVA, and of course right here on Facebook Live. And so for prayer requests, please write to us at Pastor Jim, P-A-S-T-O-R-J-I-M, at T-M-H-N-O-W.org. And then the last thing we want to mention to you is we're really hoping that you'll join us on our Tuesday Family Worship Zoom. This is where we get to share the message that God has put upon this house, the Master's House, uh, about getting the Word of God into your home and how to do that, and to your family and to your friends. So every Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, we meet for a Zoom meeting. It lasts 40 minutes. Mm -hmm. at, uh, <clears throat> it's different than this process because... We're just talking to you here, mm -hmm. but we like the Zoom because everybody can participate, and if they want to say something, they can, and it's really great. We have some great Bible discussions, but you'll also learn the six easy steps on how to have family worship at home. We mentor that mm -hmm. every Tuesday night, so the way to find out about that is just go to the website, either website. You can go to tmhnow.org, or you can go to familybiblerevolution.com. Either one, just go to the calendar, look on Tuesdays. Click on Tuesday on that link, and it'll show you the link for the Zoom, and you can join us. Yeah. So go ahead and like us, share us, and tell everybody about us, and join us on Sundays, Tuesday nights, and next week for Saturday and Sunday for three meetings. We're so glad you came. Father, we pray for all those that are listening and all those that will be listening in the future, and we just uh, thank you. We pray a blessing upon them. We call them blessed, happy, healthy, whole and walking in the fulfillment of Scripture in their lives. Yeah. In, Jesus in Jesus' name. And we say, Amen. Amen. You got anything else you'd like to say? Go forth and do the power of four. <laughs> Go forth and do the power yes. of four. We pray that's a blessing to you. Yes. Be blessed and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.